Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Fun Friend Friday. My name is Eric Reed, and I am your host, I guess, for this Fun Friend Friday, wearing our Fiesta frocks, or festive frocks, or foolish frocks, or whatever we call it. So good morning, good morning, everybody. Take a minute, jump in, say hello. I am gonna jump over to my Facebook page real quick and make sure that we are going live. I see Greg has jumped in. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the share it out button. As you come on, take a moment and share this Fun Friend Friday on your Facebook page so that your friends, neighbors, countrymen, whatever can get a chance to see you. Good morning, Greg. Um, I'm just setting this up for a share, so I'm gonna be looking down here. So entertain the crowd. Good morning, Steve. Um, Good to see you as well. We are sharing out the Fun Friend Friday. So I've gotten that taken care of, you know, and so now we've got shares going on. We've got Steve jumping in. We've got Greg jumping in. I know there's gonna be a whole lot more coming in. Um, so I am excited about that. Gotta set up one more thing. There we go. Anyhow, welcome to Fun Friend Friday, everybody. Um, good morning, Al. Good to have you in the house. Um, I'm fiddling down here, fiddling. Does anybody else use the fiddling word? That was like my mom's word. Stop fiddling. Fiddling. Um, so anyhow, good morning and welcome to Fun Friend Friday. I have taken a moment and shared this out through my Facebook page. I hope you'll do the same because my friend Greg is coming in all the way from Italy. Buongiorno. And uh, we are going to have a fantastic Fun Friend Friday and we're going to kick it off here in just a minute. What I do want to do is take a minute and um, uh, I got a whole pile of stuff over here. Maybe I should change to my whole pile of stuffed glasses so I can actually see. No. Um, anyhow, this I just got in the mail last night. So Danny um, Ayin um, sent me his book. He just finished publishing it. Um, it is called Leveraged Learning and how the disruption of education helps lifelong learners and experts within some ex learners and experts with something to teach. And so it really talks about the change in the education model, the change in the education system, and about how to become a lifelong learner, and also how to teach and use uh, education into the lifelong learning system. So again, I just, picked, just got it sent to me. I'm really kind of looking forward to it. Um, I glanced through it yesterday, Danny, and uh, lots of meat in this, um, I think gonna like that. So again, another book club. Um, if you were here last week on Fun Friend Friday, you saw um, my friend Daniel. His book, uh, You Were Born to Fly, got a number one Amazon bestseller in a couple categories. Um, launching, don't forget, October 2nd, the Kindle edition. And so you can still get that for 99 cents. And as he reminds us, you don't need to have a Kindle to use the Kindle edition. You just need to have some kind of electronic device that will download the Kindle software onto. And so go out and get that as well. I'm thinking about maybe doing something next week with him to talk about what it takes to become self-published, how to go through that vehicle, how to go through that process. So uh, look into that, look in as well. Good morning, Juan. Good morning, everybody. We do have a fun friend Friday kicking off here in just a minute. Um, so during the week following Daniels and now Danny's. I'm a lot of people just throwing it out there. I didn't realize we had so many publishers, writers uh, in the room, and I love to read. I can't believe I'm saying that after all the struggles I had in school. Um, but I love to read books that are in my genre, in my lane learning, education, growth, personal development, uh, success. And so uh, feel free to pop me a copy. I'll read it through and then we'll talk about it here on Fun Friend Friday. So good morning, everybody. It is Fun Friend Friday. I'm gonna take a minute and invite my guest Greg here in just a minute. I wanna do a quick technology check. Um, so everybody else just talk to each other, say hello, tell where you're from, what you're doing, why you're doing it, where you should be doing it from. Looks good, looks good on my side. Um, hope everything is good on your side as well, Greg. Um, so Greg is a fellow JM tier. He is a lifelong learner. He is um, a leader and somebody that I've had the privilege of watching sort of from the sidelines and never really connected one on one. So this is going to be a lot of fun to be able to get to know him. I've been interviewing a few people that know him. I've called some people that knew him back in his old days and they've told me some stories. 
Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun getting to know him from the sidelines. So now I get to know him from the center lane, so to speak, um, and invite him to be part of Fun Friend Friday. So what I'm going to do, and as you guys know, we've started this Fun Friend Friday fiesta, festive frock thing. Um, getting pretty low in the closet. It's not all that festive. It's a little Hawaiian, little Bahama Joe uh, kind of thing. I'm going to invite Greg. If you're thinking of, let me just do this real quick. There we go. Got this annoying reminder at the top. If you're going to do a face-to-face -face, or if you're going to try and use Facebook Live, um, a couple tips and tricks. So make sure your other side is using a phone. Sometimes when you try and do phone to laptop or laptop to phone to iPad, it becomes a lot of technology that Facebook doesn't like. And Facebook, again, is trying to move towards a mobile app kind of situation, a mobile app kind of environment. They want to be in your hand, in your face all the time. So by using a phone, you're definitely happier in Facebook land. Um, it doesn't matter Apple to those other things, um, but make sure both phones are in the same position, laying down, festive frock, like that. You know, Joe, you're in a place where you should be able to find a lot of these crazy things. I'm gonna have to have you like go Goodwill shopping and send them to me or whatever. Um, so make sure your phone is in the long way. Uh, the other thing I also always advise is that if you're going to be doing anything and it's even going to be about more than five or 10 minutes, have a power cord plugged in because for some reason, Facebook Live drains a battery. And I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. I'm not that smart. Just know that these are little tips and tricks for you to be successful. And so when you're ready to invite your guests, you just simply go down and you find them on your Facebook uh, notice. And it says, bring Greg on camera. You click add. He gets a message saying, would you like to join? Would you like to join? Would you like to join? And they make a decision and they do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's that easy. I, it's that easy. You know, everything in life, I have to like, I'm, I'm adjusting the camera because I mean, wow, what a shirt. Um, Look at I, that. Yeah, I like it. Um, I like your shirt. And, we may have to like, you know, there's that ugly sweater exchange thing. We may have to have a, a fun friend Friday frock exchange club. And then I love the fact that you painted a mural behind you. I didn't paint this mural, but this is our sunroom in our apartment here in Northern Italy. And what they've done is they painted a mural on, I've got windows and doors on two of the walls. And on the other walls, they've painted a mural of the city where when you're looking out the window, what you're seeing out the window is what's painted on these walls. It's amazing. I was thinking it was 360. So if there was a window behind you, that would be the scene. Yes. So if I looked over here behind me, this, this thing is what's behind me out that window. <laughs> it's how crazy. fun. It's so, awesome. So, so, Welcome, welcome, welcome. I love your wear. I love your outfits. Um, if you don't know, Greg is living in Italy. What city in Italy? Um, we're living in Vicenza, northern Italy, right, out, right outside of Venice. <laughs> okay, you suck. Um, <laughs> just, yeah. I'm getting it out there. Like, you know, but, um, and then you've been there and then came back and then went back. You yeah, lived back in the um, States for a while. Yeah, yeah. My wife came over in June, early June for a job. Um, I came with her for two weeks, got her settled in. We found an apartment, bought a car, got her driver's licenses, you know, all that stuff you have to do here. Then I had to go back for my business stuff and wrap up some loose ends. My daughter got married. I did some business dealings. I had a um, speaking engagement out in San Diego. And then, of course, the IMC, the John Maxwell International Maxwell Conference down in Orlando in August. And I left from Orlando after the conference to finally return to Italy. And I've been back here since August 10th. So I've done the expat thing. You've done or doing the. Is this your first expat or second expat? Um, sort of. Um, I was stationed with Sam, my wife, Samantha. Um, we were stationed down in Naples, Italy, 10 year, 11 years ago. Uh, but I was active duty still, so I'm not sure that qualifies as expat. We were only here for two years, um, so here we are back as civilians. So I, 
I yeah, that's like what my really report tough. told me that you had been ex, you know, <laughs> that you had lived outside. Um, I've been living on the lamb. <laughs> you have. Um, but don't worry, I got a very, very big report on you yesterday. Like I told you earlier, about 95% of it was redacted. But the optics of it are still very good. So we're going to go with it. Do you love this optics? That's the new word. You've been out of the States for a while, but that's the new buzzword is the optics of us. Yes. I'm like, yes. why don't they just say what it is? But anyhow, so you've been now officially expat, what, about a month or so? Yeah, yeah, a couple months. So you speak fluent Italian. Si, si, parle italiano. <laughs> so when I expatted, I was still working in the States, thinking in the English, talking in the English. And so everybody was like, why don't you speak Spanish? You've been living here for three years. And I was like, you don't understand that like 80% of my day is still English and you people will let me get away with it. So <laughs> at expat to expat, what you got to do is make a commitment like Saturday, no English from the moment I wake up until the moment I go to bed. Because it's so easy, especially where you're at, there's enough English people that when you get frustrated, you can drop the English and they'll carry you through. Exactly. And you know, now they have Google Translate. It's your best teacher. Yeah, ex yeah. Uh, but I used to be at places, it was, it was funny because you'd be Googling. I got, you'll get really good at this sort of international sign language thing like, I like this, yes. yes. And they look at you like, you're an idiot, yes. <laughs> but I got really good at sign language. I got really good at just diving in and making a fool of myself. The only thing you need to know here is how to order wine and pizza. <laughs> I, hey, my son will be good with the pizza, the wine. I think I can swing. Yes, no. Si, grazie. <laughs> so how long are you anticipating being an expat? Um, the interesting thing is my wife's employment here is indefinite. Uh, we don't have a cap on how long we can stay. So normally federal employees have a five-year cap. Um, military usually rotates every three years, but Sam works for a private nonprofit, um, so there's no limit. As long as every two years she renews her work visa, uh, we can stay here as long as we want to. But so I think if she's hiring. Give me a call. I'm ready to leave the states. I'm, I'm totally Absolutely. good. <laughs> um, what I, I think we'll revisit you. it after three years. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's funny because you'll go through this. Yay! We're on vacation and then you'll start to like I miss Walmart I miss you know yeah. like there's certain things that you start to say I miss because it was easy it was convenient it feels home and if you can push past that we always said once you hit that third year it's like oh this is my new life yeah um, it's a lot like getting out of your comfort zone when you're doing anything you know, it, it, the, your comfort zone keeps sucking you back to where you want to be, where you're comfortable, where you know, um, and you got to break through that and get used to your new surroundings. And, and, and it's good to be uncomfortable. So are you an adventurer by heart? I know that being in the Navy and things like that, but do you consider yourself high risk or low risk taker? Um, I, I consider myself pretty much a risk taker for sure. I mean, I can count uh, unlimited times of where I've taken big risks, but I think it wasn't until I met my wife that I really, you know, she's the one that's really encouraged me to, you know, just go out there and conquer stuff. But um, you probably know I walked away from a, a very high paying, a very lucrative corporate executive position to do my own business. I mean, that was a huge risk. I, my income probably dropped 90%. <laughs> and, know that feeling. <laughs> she encouraged and supported that. Um, so, you know, and then just when we moved overseas, we, we sold everything we owned. We had two brand new cars. We had two houses. We sold a house. We sold our cars. We sold all of our furniture. The only thing we have here are the clothes we had. And that was it. We got rid of everything. And so, so I, I, we went through the same thing. We did put some stuff in like a 10 by 10 storage that was stuff yeah. that, you know, like the touchstones of life or the that's a one of a kind thing. And if we ever come back or if we ever fully move, we'll have it sent. 
Um, and then we came back and so we had to buy everything from rugs to silverware to cups and the cu it was like coming back after a, a flood or a disaster, which was good and bad. But um, I also took all 300 and some books with me <laughs> overseas because I thought, well, I need my books with me. Um, yeah. Hopefully you didn't do that. So the idea that I borrowed confidence from my wife to take the risk. Yeah. How does, and especially man to woman, you know, it's sometimes a little ego busting to go from being able to kill this big giant monolithic corporate bear. check bear to being <laughs> unemployed. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife, Sam, has been really um, a solid rock of found. She's the constant, right? Everything around me is changing all the time. I I've lived a life of change, you know, from I left home. Daytona Beach, Florida is my home. I was born and raised in Daytona Beach. And I left when I was 17 years old to join the Navy. Um, and I, I went to San Diego and... Um, you know, the rest, the next 24 years was full of change. And I met Sam 18 years ago. She was also in the Navy. We met on a ship. And, um, you know, she's been the constant while everything around me has been changing. So um, I've always been able to draw on her strength and support to know she's kind of my compass, really. <laughs> she kind of is my litmus test on, um, you know, when I'm in the right, um, on the right path and when I'm not. So um, it's a strange place to be and it's scary. Um, it's scary to, especially big change, leaving a corporate position. First of all, I had never lived anywhere more than three, maybe four years. And Sam and I found ourselves in Northern Virginia for almost eight years. So that was new to us. Um, and I stayed with that company, that IT company, for almost the whole time, seven years, which is the longest I've been anywhere since I left the Navy. So to leave, to make the decision to leave, um, after living a life in the military where money wasn't very good. I mean, we've all heard how <laughs> service members are not. I mean, we have service members on food stamps, folks, our enlisted troops live on food stamps and the president, you know, either passes over their pay raises or they give them a measly 2%. It's not enough. Um, so I lived for 24 years paycheck to paycheck. And here I find myself in this corporate executive position where I'm making money hand over fist. And seven years later, I decide to resign <laughs> to pursue my passion. It, it was almost so, feeling a little selfish. So the bunch of big ones. So I'm going to sort of like break some of them down. So military, Navy, safety, security, though not high pay. Predictability, yeah. comfort zone. Like get up, do it again, keep my shirt straight, and I'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Total predictability. Corporate executive, here's your big check. Dazzle the world with, uh, with your talent and your abilities. Yeah to guess what, you don't have safety and security, you don't have big check, the only thing you have is a dream. Yeah, well. What stops you from going back to one of the two previous lifestyles, aside that you're living in Italy? Um, two things, preparation and determination. Ooh, I think. Joe, yeah. get those. Yeah. Preparation, um, so I, che I feel like I cheated a little bit because I'm, I'm not the same as everybody else. There's a lot of people who have walked away from a corporate job or a high paying job to pursue their dreams that didn't have a safety net. I kind of have a safety net, albeit very small. I have a military retirement coming in every month and disability, you know, military disability. So there's a little bit of money trickling in for me from my service. So that was a safety net, um, but we knew what we had coming in and we started to prepare and uh, position ourselves for living on that income and not depending on what was coming in. See, it's very easy 
to receive that big paycheck and start buying the big cars and the fancy houses and the, the nice clothes. And now you're <laughs> dependent on that income, right? You know, I bought this shirt while I was employed with that company. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to say whether that was an investment or not. Um, so what I want you guys to hear, though, listen to it. It was preparation and determination. But so often, you know, I used to say when I worked in corporate America that as you went up, your desk got bigger and so did your chair. And it wasn't because you were more important. It was because you got more settled into that and the back end started to expand to fit the chair. I think sometimes we get in this place of comfort that we've got this amount of money coming in or this amount of certainty coming in. And so we expand everything around us to fit. We go and get the double digit car payments or the bigger house, or we start buying things on time because it doesn't matter because my paychecks are always going to come. And so what if it takes 24 months to pay off? It's really not a big deal. I can afford it for the next. And so we start to expand. And then when we want to have our dream, live overseas, travel around the world, write a book, time out, get married, have an extra kid. We're like, wait a minute, there's no room for that to fit in here because I've used up every inch of my freedom and safety. And now I want to change something and I can't find a place to squeeze it in. And we either make a choice. We either start to give up things so we can go up into our dreams or then we start to give up our dream and like now is not the time I don't have the finances I don't have the resources I don't have whatever and as you said you guys started scaling back why the income was high to what the lowest predictable point would be yes. so that as your business grew it was like you know what we're comfortable living at this level even though our income is here so now we've just doubled our freedom not doubled our income that's exactly it it, it's forecasting what's coming. You know, you got to look down the road. If you're, if you're taking a road trip and you're leaving Florida and driving to California, you're not looking in the rear view mirror. <laughs> you got to look straight ahead and know where you're heading and, and forecast what might come up across your path and, and prepare as best you can for that. Yeah. And so when we expatted, we did pretty much the same thing. We sold, but when people are like, oh, that was a big dramatic move. It was like, no, because we've been kind of like walking towards it for three years. We got rid of cable yeah. bills. We drove cars that had no car payments on it so that we were used to cash only life. We stopped putting things on credit card because we knew when we lived outside the country, we wouldn't have necessarily the luxury of Visa MasterCard. And so we started to practice the lifestyle that we wanted to grow into before we needed to show up there. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we try not to give the impression that we just liquidated and on the spur of the moment planned a, a getaway to go live in Italy. It was nothing like that. We arrived in Northern Virginia a couple of years after I retired from the Navy. And one of the things Sam and I said to each other is we'd love to go back and work in Europe as civilians. And we set a goal, <laughs> you know, instead of in the military, right? Because it's a very different perspective. Um, there's safety and security when you're active duty military, you're on a base, you have a job, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so we wanted to come back here and experience life and other cultures in a different perspective. And it was actually a goal we set six years ago. So this is a goal that's six years in the making. This wasn't an overnight, hey, let's move to Italy. <laughs> so so I really, I, I got to go over that. And your good friend and cohort, uh, Diane, is up here. Ah, uh, hi, Somewhere Diane. over there. She may be in Toronto, Alaska, or Nova Scotia, knowing her. But the other day, she had posted a big win in her business. Yeah. And everybody was standing around, hey, Diane. And, Kudos to you, well earned, not taking away. But I often think when we see those Facebook moments of like, Greg's living in Italy, Diane's traveling the world and writing, that nobody realizes that six years ago, you clipped the cable bill. You turned down the brand new car for the one. My, like my car, when we left the States, the headliner was falling down in my head and I was trying to figure <laughs> ways to duct tape it up because I didn't want to buy a new car that would only shorten the amount of time I had to go to freedom. 
I, I don't think, oh, no, it was true. Now, I got to tell you, on the outside, it looked pretty and shiny. And when I'd show up places, they're like, look at your drive. And I'm like, please don't look inside. Don't ask for a ride. Because I got duct tape on the headliner. Um, but I knew that that duct tape on the headliner was an extra day living my dream of being with my kids every day. It was an extra week of being able to experience a life that wasn't committed to CarMax or Visa or MasterCard or, you know, Bank USA. Yeah. And so I often say when I see somebody make a move like yours going to Italy or even Diana or other big successes, take a moment and ask them how long the journey was. And as you said, it was it was in partly six years, but it was also 25 years worth of naval career that you stuck it out knowing that if I do this thing, I'll always be able to have this level safety net in my life. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And you know, you brought up a good point, Eric. You know, this is the trouble with social media because we're seeing everybody's highlight reel and we're comparing our behind the scenes to it. Oh, do that again. Joe, get that. Get that. Joe, <laughs> that's a book title. <laughs> the problem with social media is we're getting everybody's highlight reel and we compare it to our behind the scenes. And it's apples and oranges, right? Fair, unfair comparisons. We're not that good. Oh, look at Diane. She just bagged this multi, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollar deal. But Diane worked her ass off for that. You know, Diane she didn't spend many a day crying and loneliness yes, and exhaustion. She, she has struggled to get to this point. She has sacrificed to get to that point. They didn't just write her a check and hand it to her and say, hey, Diane, come work for us. I mean, she made that stuff happen, and it takes a lot of effort to do that. So, um, yeah, I, I hear you. And, and that's one of the dangers of social media that you have to be cognizant about is don't compare your behind the scenes to others' highlight reel, because that's all you're seeing. A Amen. And we, we, know, we, we know this because we've all sat in the movie theater and they, like, show the trailer and, like, oh, I got to go see that. That's going to be so bomb awesome. And then you walk out of the theater when you see the whole movie, and they're, like, what? Well, <laughs> really? That was long. That was dull. It's like, well, <laughs> duh, you think they're going to show you? Um, it's the same idea. And I always, when I coach people on building businesses and creating brands and talking about things like that, P90X never explains that the 90 is the 90 minutes of workout you have to do Correct. to get the abs. Yes. You just somehow overlook that whole 90 and just see the six pack and think that if you buy the DVD and lay it on your chest, somehow magically it will happen. <laughs> it's called P90X because you have to power through 90 minutes extremely hard to accomplish what you want. Yes. And so I think, yes, to that P90X mentality, people, <laughs> if you're building a dream, if you're creating a change, if you're going through a transition, and you're watching people on social media going, look at me, I'm all pretty and happy and dancing. <laughs> Celebrate, congratulate them, place praise on them. But understand that behind the scenes, if it's true and it's real, it didn't happen as quickly as they were able to post it on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everything worth having is all uphill, right? Yes. I, yes. I mean, we all know who said that. Um, I have your yearbook here, by the way. Um, Good some interesting Lord. things in your high school yearbook. You're out of the news cycle, but that's like the current joke now. It's like, oh, I no, my high school I was, yearbook. I was so tuned in yesterday watching this crazy Zoom. Okay, so I'm going to tell you as an expat, do this. Stop watching American TV or American-based TV or U.S.-based TV and yes. start watching the rest of the world. And pretty soon you realize how... And I say this respectfully, how small we are yeah. in a global setting. Yes. But when you live inside the States, you think everything starts here and ends here, like we're the sun and all of the other countries are the planets. Yeah. When you live outside and you get that exposure, one of the great things is you realize you're just another one of the planets as an American and that your job is to learn to live among the other planets, not to try and always be the sun. So, yes. One of the things I did discover in my research, and I want you to go into it really quick because I thought it was a fun idea, is aim smart. Yeah. 
So Aim Smart is a goal setting program or a goal setting mi mindset. Um, it's sort of your 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 thing ish. Do a really quick explain Aim and then Smart. Yeah. So um, I think uh, well I'm not going to make an assumption, but Smart goal setting has been around for quite a while, and Smart is an acronym. You know, um, it, it's it's to a way to measure. Um, make sure your goals are achievable. So we all have the acronym SMART, but the AIM piece is um, designed to help you focus in on what do you want to achieve? What is the most you can do? What's the minimum you can do? And where are you in the middle? And let's go for that. So the AIM piece narrows you down and gives you basically a dose of reality. And so says, AIM okay. is an acronym, correct? So A is the acceptable. Yes. And M is the maximum. Um, yeah, A is the minimum acceptable. I forgot what it is. <laughs> I have it in my notes over there and I feel bad because they're over there, but I think it's what, the, um, the intended outcome? I, I can't remember the acronym, to be honest. Talk with to you. people. Why don't you go get your notes and remind me? <laughs> we got the oh, no, my M. Y'all think I'm cracking, but... I've got my see? binder right there, but... It, oh, I, I know. But I thought it was really good, um, and that's why I stole it from your, your dossier. Um, awesome. <laughs> acceptable, ideal, and middle. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So ideal. You think I made that up, folks? Nice job, Eric. So yeah, what's the minimum acceptable? What's the ideal? And you know, where in between that are you? Um, and then once you get down to something that's reasonable, because sometimes we're like, um, say we're trying to lose weight, and we our ultimate goal is 100 pounds. That can be overwhelming. So you say, okay, well, what's the minimum you'll want to do? Okay, well, I at least want to drop 20 pounds. Okay, so your maximum's 120. What's reasonable? I think I can do 30 pounds in the next two months. Okay, there you go. Let's target the 30 pounds, not the 100, not the 20, but the 30 pounds that you believe you can accomplish. And now let's put the smart around it, right? So um, it's an extension of, of the SMART goal setting. What I liked about acceptable, ideal, and minimal. So minimal is I know that I'm making progress and momentum towards my goal if I hit these baselines. The ideal is like if I could really dedicate nothing else in my life but to hitting this goal, this is where I'd want to be. Yes. And the acceptable is like, you know what, I'm not going to just show up and I'm going to play hard, but I'm going to grab myself a little bit of grace that something might get in the way and it might not all come true, but I did better than average. That sort of acceptable middle zone. Yes. And I, I was working with somebody the other day and they were talking about their vision board. And I think we need to apply this acceptable ideal and minimum when we design those vision boards. Because to get to Italy, to live a lifestyle on the vision board is that ideal, but acceptable might be to live debt free here in the US so that I could travel back and forth across the straits at will. And minimal might be to stop adding things to my credit card so that we can begin to work towards a life of freedom. Exactly, yes, yeah. And so I sort of, when I was reading your thing, I told you, I've read all 5,394 page of redacted or redacted um, statements oh. they sent me on you. Oh, oh only 5,000 pages? <laughs> oh, trust me, I'm only, through the first four I'm only through the first four years of your life after high school. I, I, I mean, I'm exhausted. Lord, I'm surprised you're still standing. Um, but I think we could use this as a template and this is a masterminding thing for when we create our vision board of putting it from minimal to acceptable to ideal on the vision board, that the things that are in the center of the vision board are those daily things that I'm going to focus on trying to achieve or accomplish or get to. And then the ideal is, or the acceptable is the things that, you know what, 
If I nail those, it's going to have an echo effect to the outside. Or, and if I really start to master that, then I get to live on the edge or vice versa, move from the edge to the center. The, yeah. I think maybe the ideal would be in the middle, acceptable yeah. in the center. But take time to really look at your SMART goals because one of the big frustrations, and you as a coach hear it all the time, is that people are like, oh yeah, I tried that and that failed. Oh yeah, I, I wanted that, but you know, blah, blah, blah. And they, that up and up and up, the, that they give up. And yeah. I think when I saw that aim SMART, I thought, you know, it's not that you're saying I'm not going to try because you have to still identify the acceptable and the ideal, but yeah. you give yourself permission to have a day of like, I'm just hitting the minimum. I, you know what? The kids are sick. The dog got into the trash. It's raining. And I just found out one of my family members is sick. I'm going to live in the minimal zone for today. Yeah. Yeah. Each one of those still has positive actions towards the goal. They're just different levels, right? So you still have forward momentum. It just may be not from zero to 60 all at once. Maybe you go to zero to 25 first, and then you get up to 60. Yeah, and sometimes you have to earn the right to have those big dreams. You know, there was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like I said, not to pick on Diane, but she's still in the room, so we get to. Um, <laughs> that idea that, you know, somebody's like, wow, I really wish I knew how to, I wish I had her contract. I would do this, this, and this. And it's like, really? Because you're kind of screwing up the one you have just going down to the local high school. So make the commitment, follow through, hit the minimum on that consistently enough. Because you haven't developed the muscle, the fortitude, the and whatever, the endurance to swim the English channel. Because you <laughs> won't even put on a bathing suit. Yeah, exactly. And Diane just made a great point. You know, we can't be 100% every day and you don't want to crush yourself and crush your dreams because you didn't succeed where you thought you wanted to go one day. You know, that's a terrible way to really mess up your mentality. So if you're seeing a little bit of progress along the way, you'll keep that forward momentum going. Yeah, I was with somebody the other day and she said, I'm focused on the war, not the battle. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so when she feels like she might be losing the battle or when the battle isn't going in her favor, she's like, that's okay. I can retreat. I can regroup. I can reorganize it. I can rearm myself because the, bat the war isn't over yet. Absolutely. And as long as I can stay in the game long enough, I'll win the war. But when sure. we give up in the battle zone, then we've lost everything. So I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> but aim smart. I had to get that in. Now let me check my other notes. Let's see. Diane, <laughs> do you have anything I've missed about his life? Let's see. We have moved to Naples in 2007, joined John Maxwell team in 2016, was in the Navy, wasn't the most honorable district. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I love, though, about where you're at right now from a, from, from a snapshot kind of way is that you've sort of tossed the, rec the score sheet aside. You're like, you know what? I'm going to fail. I'm going to succeed. But I'm going to run full out downhill towards the sea kind of thing. Yeah, um, that's true especially with this move, because I made some miscalculations um, from a business perspective. <laughs> when, hey, man, don't I know that one too. Hate to, I hate to admit it, but um, I knew that I would not be able to work uh, in the Italian economy from a tax perspective and, and other, and I had no plans to do so, but I did believe that I would be able to go on base and work my business on the base with the American soldiers. We live right near, my wife works at the USO Center. Um, she runs the center on Camp Ederly, which is a huge army base up here. And um, so I thought, well, what a great area to bring leadership development and coaching to an army base. <laughs> But um, there's a thing here called the Status of Forces Agreement, SOFA, and it really restricts the 
um, the family members that accompany the people that are here on working orders, which is my wife. So I'm, I'm a dependent husband over here. And so we're <laughs> that's got a cart. <laughs> I'm doing laundry, I'm cleaning, I'm washing, you know, vacuuming, <laughs> cleaning the bathroom, scrubbing toilets. I feel like I'm back in the Navy again. <laughs> so it's all good. But um, I, I did find out that I wouldn't be able to full on out do my business on base either. I was very restricted as a company to go on the base and start drumming up my own business. So um, you know, it's, it's all about mindset instead of, you know, saying, woe is me now, this sucks. What am I going to do now? We should have never moved here. I said, well, what can I do? What, what benefits can I get from this? And one thing I figured out was, um, working with the youth on base, everything I do here is going to be pro bono, but that means I get free practice to get good. And that's the way I'm looking at it. So I'm just going to be here and I'm going to get good. So a um, couple things. So when we lived in Uruguay, it was only an hour time difference. So that really helped stay in touch with U.S. clients because I was an hour ahead. whoop de doo <laughs> You know, yeah. it, it's an you're what, eight o'clock, seven o'clock at night now? Something? I, um, no, we're um, six hours ahead of the East Coast. So we're going on three o'clock. Yeah. So your workday ends when we all start kind of mentality. I found that PayPal works wonderfully because no matter where you're at in the world, you can dump money into PayPal and it's cryptocurrency on a new scale. Correct. And then I don't know who your credit card is, but Charles Schwab charged us no international transfer fees wow. or transaction fees. That's so when you go to pay, when you go to pay and you get that extra bill for buying stuff, they don't do that. And in Uruguay, they have a value-added tax like much of the world. But because I was using a U.S. credit card, I didn't have to do that. So everything went to PayPal, down to Charles Schwab, and out into the universe. Yeah. But, you, but the thing is, you, like you said, I thought I had this planned out. Somebody threw something in the middle of it. I can bitch and moan and go back to living in, you know, nowhere land. I was going to pick a state, but I don't want to offend anybody. So we'll just call it nowhere land, the middle USA. Yes. And, and driving my overpriced rented car, even though we think we own it, to yeah. our borrowed house from the bank in and out of the Walmart. Or I can take an e a weekend trip to Capri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So, Capri it is. Uh, yes, yes. Now, how, uh, yes. So when I moved there as your neighbor, how far am I away from the sea? Um, actually, Croatia is very close, and that's the hot spot for vacations. But we have a huge lake here called Lake Garda. And okay. it is phenomenal, beautiful. Because I, I got to be in a visually stimulating, well, me, the, the architect. So... So you're working on that. So I'm going to be either flying back and forth to Alaska with Diane, or I'm going to be flying back and forth to Italy with you. Now, on, my, kids will, my kids' passports, so funny story. And then we have to get to our fun friend Friday. So we were in Uruguay, and we're doing the Uruguay lifestyle thing and having a good time. And then I get this notice that our kids' passports had expired while we were there. Because children's passports only last every two years. And we did, like... <laughs> Some things you just don't plan. Had an emergency occurred, we couldn't have taken them out of the country because they would have, like, and if you see my kid, it would have even been funner. Um, so it's like, we're not officially residents because we're kind of on this middle residency level in Uruguay. So we're not legally here and we're not legally allowed to re-enter the U.S. with our kids. And so we're scrambling around going through the embassy, trying to renew their passports, thinking this could be a problem if we don't get this done. Mm -hmm. So uh, life happens. What can we say? Yes, exactly. So is your passport current and up to date? You better believe it. You bet that's one of the first things we did was just get a new passport and go out 10 years. So we're good. <laughs> so and to that effect, if you are somebody that's like looking at Greg's life and going, I want that. I so want to travel the world. I so want to do this. I so want to like 
do you get a passport? Because the opportunity is not going to come to you if you don't have a pass. What if I called you today and said, you know what? I need you to meet me in Croatia for a worldwide speaking conference. Could you be here tomorrow? All expenses paid plus a $250,000 signing bonus. Can you be here? Do you really want to answer no because I don't have a passport? Exactly. So... And if you're like, well, I can't afford a passport, I don't, okay, go get the photo at Walmart today. You know, at least begin to find out that aim smart, that what is the minimal thing that I can do today to move yeah. closer to my dream instead of complaining, bitching, and staring at everybody else's. Diane has two passports. I don't really need to know <laughs> Diane. <laughs> I, I, I also have two passports, and based on what happens in the world this month, I may have to switch countries. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Oh. Uh, I, 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 I try not to, but I just, I, oh, it's a crazy world. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right, so it is time for the Fun Friend Friday. I'm both. Woo! I know you're psyched. So anybody that hasn't watched a front, good morning, George. Now, George is international, knows Croatia, knows Northern Italy. I think he just came back from Italy or, I don't know. I know he was near that area. Um, he's my uh, my local friend here. Um, so anybody that hasn't been a part of Fun Friend Friday, here's what we do. We've got the envelopes, the Lucky Charms envelopes with green clover, orange star, red heart or pink heart, blue diamond, <laughs> yellow moon and rainbow and red balloon. Now, somebody told me there isn't a red balloon, but I don't believe them. We have not incorporated the uh, unicorn yet from the Lucky Charms. Um, a two year and a 10 year. Oh, okay, Diane. I was thinking she had one for like, like one of her Russian passports and her American passports or something. Inside. She's an international spy. <laughs> she, that's it. She's really, uh, she's an undercover espionage. Um, inside each envelope is a word, much like these, that says sacrifice, contribution, respect, balance, and a few other leadership words. My son loves to uh, stuff the envelopes. By the way, he got a 95 yesterday. <laughs> what? what? Raise the roof. <laughs> yes. If you have kids and your kids walks, jumps off the bus screaming, I got a 95, and you drop to your knees, don't. They thought I was having a heart attack. It was just like, oh, praise you, Jesus. <laughs> it was like, a, it was like a, a Pentecostal church when he walked through the door. Um, oh, it, oh, man. It, 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 he earned, he worked, he earned, he did it. And uh, we're struggling. But that 95 was like water on the desert, man. He came in, he said, I guess I'm, it, so here's what's amazing how quickly one thing can change somebody's perspective. Because he walked, at, he's been walking around, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I hate school, life is ugly, I'm useless. Like all of the negative talk that for what I do was like acid on my skin. And, <laughs> you know, I can't coach him the way I could coach an adult. I can't encourage him the same way. And so he was like really pulling me, like really testing my skill set. And I was like, just stay the course, just chip away at this, this uh, practice exam or the practice test. But when he saw that in 95, he went from being a piece of dirt in the mud to being king of the universe, king of the world, dancing on earth, saying he can do anything. School is great. I can't wait to go tomorrow. I can't wait. I'm going to kill it. Can we do home? So one if you work in a team, if you work in a company, if you've got a spouse that's part of your life, if you've got people, find something to lift them up. Just notice it because they're putting in the hard work. They're putting in the effort. It may not look like a 95 on the surface, but they're trying to perform at that level. So take a moment and just, you know, encourage somebody randomly just because the truth is we all need that feeling every day. And then... Watch them change. Watch, if you, you can do more with a compliment than you could ever do with a criticism. So 
Absolutely. I, you know where the ninety. You know where that's taped to. I, I've got it taped like right next to my desk, and I'm just like, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Uh, but anyhow, your envelope pick, woo, ninety-five. It was so he starts struggles with read. Just for a background, he struggles with reading. He struggles with um, auditory processing disorder, which means what he reads or hears, he doesn't. It's hard to keep it all in context. And it was an, a, an entire um, math test that was word problems. Oh. So we were like, we were like aiming for the six, like on the aim score, the minimum we were hoping for was like, <laughs> like, like a 65. <laughs> we were like, if we can get a 65, we scored. So uh, <laughs> never underestimate the potential of somebody that's encouraged. What is your pick of the envelope? All right, so um, one of my wife's and my favorite country to visit is Ireland. So I'm going with the green clover. Green clover. All right. Don't so, scream and clap at once. Oh, oh I, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. I forgot the music. Ah, you've got oh. me so. No wonder no work gets done when you and Diana and Melanie are together. I, this is this. terrible. <laughs> I love this. So much. I'm not ashamed to say. I hope it always will stay this way. My hat is off. Won't you stand up and take a bow? So, thank you for being a friend on Fun Friend Friday. Thank you for bringing your wisdom, your humor, your your fin fantastic fiesta wear shirt what? um i know <laughs> yeah. i've got like one more and then i have to go shopping um and thank you for bringing your laughter everybody knows that when you walk into a room they better hold on and uh, if you're one of the geriatric people there might be a spot in the chair after you leave um from so much laughter but so you chose green clover oh my god i'm so nervous <laughs> and the winner is miss utah no i'm sorry <laughs> I'm Your sorry. word is desire. Oh, my gosh. Well, let me just think about that for a second. That's an interesting word because desire can lead you to two different places, right? You can have the desire to do something and just have the desire to do it and never take any action to accomplish what you're desiring. But if the desire's strong enough, if the desire's strong enough within you, it will prompt you into the right actions to move you forward to accomplishing whatever it is that you desire. And that's the thing, really, I believe is that no matter what you desire, you have the ability. We all have the ability within us to accomplish and achieve everything we desire to have in life. And it all boils down to choices we make. Um, so that's, that's my um, 15 seconds with Greg <laughs> on the word desire. But what I like is, I think one of the points you bring up, and I just noticed Dr. Lowe jumped in as well, so good morning, Dr. Uh, Tanya Lowe, is um, I think that sometimes, and I'll, I'll speak from two perspectives, but one is a Western thinker, is that we think our, our wants are desires. Uh -huh. And yeah. that want, I want a new car, I want a bigger house, I want, that, that, that doesn't have the texture, the depth, the, the quality of flavor that desire has. Yeah. And Napoleon Hill talks about that burning desire Correct. that 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 thing that you can't walk away from once it's been seen felt touched experienced mm -hmm. and i think so often and you probably experience as a coach as well so often we meet people that think they're at their desire level but it's really their want level 
And the reason they're not achieving the change, not achieving the goal, not achieving what they want in their life is because they're focusing on such a shallow water place of just, I want to satisfy this need. Yeah. Instead of if my life could truly be like this, I can't. And I, I forgot what I was reading. But what if every prayer you ever prayed came true? What yeah. would your life look like? What would your prayer look like? Like if, like if I said, I just got a memo from above and it says, anybody that prays a prayer at 1111 today, I will grant it. But, you, but that's your one and only prayer for the next 20 years. What would it look like? And that's one way of really separating that desire from a want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a desire is really that internal push. You, this isn't something you think up here. It's something that comes from in here. When you desire something, that internal engine kicks on and pushes you forward towards it. If you're not feeling that, that's not desire. <laughs> that's just a, man, I wish I had that. And that's going to go by the wayside. Keep going, because you're there. I, I mean, I, I love that going by the, and, and I think, I don't know, I probably could spend an hour thinking on this. Thank you for getting me started. Um, that idea that we leap from want to want to want to want, and we think we're building a life of purpose, passion, and, and vision, but we're really just leap pasting a buffet of wants. And so when one of the wants doesn't come through as quickly or as deeply or as big as we want, we blame the whole thing as flawed. Yeah, And exactly. it was like, you only gave 10% of yourself to it and you wanted a thousand percent return. I mean, come on people, that's a want, not a yeah. desire. So this is, this is the same thought that you have with, when you're determining what your passion is. Desire and passion could almost be synonymous because we react the same way to it, right? So when you determine your passion and you're, if, if it's not really what you're passionate about, you're gonna get off that bandwagon real quick. You're gonna take a few steps and go, wait, what, what am I doing? This isn't worth it. And then you're gonna shift gears. So that's the same with a desire, right? There, the, you were talking about the want and the want and the want, and then you're like, ah, maybe not. That's the same thing that happens when we're trying to figure out what our passions are, of desire and passion. I, I feel like they're almost synonymous in a way, in, in a way that we drive. If it's true passion or if it's true um, desire or, yeah, true passion or desire, you're going to pursue that differently because that internal engine is going to push you that way. It's not going to be an option for you. I, and I, and I, so yes, because when you're the, the clearer you become on your desire and your passion, it's almost as if you stop moving and everything starts moving to you. Yes. 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 Yeah. This, um, my coaching program was all about energy levels, um, catabolic and anabolic. Uh, energy levels and I coach around shifting energy and so I totally believe that you know what we're putting out is what we're getting back and that internal engine energy whatever you want to call it soul um, that creates <laughs> your desire your passion and the stronger that is the more likely you're going to achieve it because you're going to stick with it Yes, I, yes. And so um, I think when I look, your decision to be in Italy today in such a festive frock <laughs> with a fabulous mural, or wait, a fabulous fresca, fresco. <gasps> yes! Fun friend Friday, festive, festive frock, and a fronted by a fresco. <laughs> ah. And I used to have a speech problem when I was a kid. And F was one of my <laughs> hard words. Say that five times fast. That'll cure that. <laughs>
Yeah, you know, Fun Friend Friday and a festive proc fronted by a fresco. Take that. I can do live TV. That speech. But and I, yeah, take that speech therapist who said I was stupid back in the 70s. Whoops, <laughs> I just dated myself. Um, and now I'm ashamed of how old I am. But I think you being in Italy today did not happen because you wanted it. No. It happened because it was a burning and passionate desire to live a life of exploration and, and learning and growth and, and change and transformation. And this is just one of the elements in that recipe of life that you're building. Abs absolutely, absolutely. The things we desire the most are the things we're most likely to ha make happen. The things we desire the most are the things that are most likely to happen. I love that, yes. The things we desire most are the things that are most likely to happen. And so when I joke and tease about wanting to be there in Italy, Italy is, Italy is fine, but the exploration of self and people and getting out of my comfort zone and seeing what the universe offers and what I can offer to the universe in different environments, yeah. that's, yes. that's, the, that's the piece that always calls me into it. And that's always a desire to be of value to people and to learn from people to increase my value. Exactly. So, love it. Love it. Love so in wrapping up, um, I know Melanie's not here, but I know Diane's here. So she would be like calling you out on the next team conference call if you didn't explain what you guys were doing as a team and what yeah. your part is on that little door of the Explorer team. <laughs> Diane's amazing. I've partnered with Diane Dick and Melanie Ake and Ms. Yal Diaz. The four of us have um, joined forces as John Maxwell certified coaches. Um, speakers and trainers to um, come up with by design learning institute um, and what we do is we help people with their personal and professional growth journeys um, between the four of us we have two packages the explore package and the discover package the explore package is an entry-level package for people that are just starting their personal growth journey maybe they don't even know what a growth um, a growth plan is we offer a program where they are put into the 15 laws um, plan over 15 weeks and it keeps rotating and at the end of that first 15 weeks they actually develop their own personal growth plan um, now they can stay in the explore program or they can go on to the discover program which is a, a lot more we've added some leadership courses Diane will teach uh, put your dreams to the test on Wednesdays, and then on Thursdays, I rotate subjects. I'm in the middle of going through everyone communicates, you connect, um, and then I'll rotate my subjects um, for those. And then every Saturday morning, the four of us open the call line and we stay there for an hour and offer free coaching. Um, anybody that's in the, the Discover program can get online and get coaching where they're at, what hurdles are they trying to break through? We coach them through that. Um, and so all of these courses are held virtually um, at different times of the day and different days of the week. So it, it's very um, friendly to schedules. Um, and we also make available the recordings up to a week after the class has been held. So you, if you miss oh, the good. class, you can go in up to a week later and still catch the, the lesson and the activities. Diane's bring in um, experiential learning to a virtual platform. So we're starting to mix things up. So this is not your traditional um, online courses. It's very interactive, very mastermind-ish, very coaching oriented. So um, it's by, life by design, um, the explore package and the discover package. What I love about it is knowing all four of you, you're not like any, like, well, you're separate from the three, but each of you four come from a different place, not only gender, but history, corporate versus non-corporate. Yeah. Um, so there's a little bit of everything on the buffet there that is. when you teach 15 laws or talk about 15 laws, your perspective is different than Diane's on that or Melanie's or Mizell's. 
And so it gives me a place to be like, okay, I'm going to borrow a little from him and a little from her and a little from that and a little from this. And I'm going to start to begin to learn the language, get involved in the, the conversation without feeling as if it's teacher, student, distant platform. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and so I love the way you guys have done that and that each of you has a little bit of a niche, but you're not so locked in that you can't roll over into the other side. Yeah. And the other thing is, I, I know it sounds a lot of Maxwell-ish, but we are incorporating other platforms. Um, but our base platform is definitely the growth and leadership teachings of John Maxwell. Sorry for the noise. Every time, I swear, every time the um, wine bottle truck comes in the alley and dumps all the wine bottles. <laughs> I, okay. So you all hear this. Every time they come to empty my trash, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> Clank, Only wine Clank. bottles. But I live in Italy, so what can I say? Um, hey. Do you guys have clothes dryers? Oh, do you have a dryer in your house? Or do we you only have, have a washer. Look, I, look I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break the rule. Look. Yes, that, that is the balance. We, we had three of those in our house. And I'm, so... So I digress, but you will understand and you will learn to love it. You know you're living a different life when you wake up and go, oh my gosh, it's gonna be sunny. Quick, get the laundry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because everything has to get washed and outside by noon so that it can take advantage of the drying season. And then when you have three days of rain, you start wearing the same outfits and everybody in town wears the same outfits because they brought out of clean clothes. So exactly. that is part of the, that, I mean, that is the expat life. We do not have dryers outside of the U.S. They're ridiculous ways for energy consuming machines. And pretty soon you'll get used to clothes that feel stiff. Like, it's, yeah. you know, but anyhow. Um, exactly. No, we, we digress from your wine bottles to your laundry. Such a life. Sorry. Um, so Diane, I think I saw her drop or she mentioned it, but she will drop or one of you will drop the link to that. I know you guys are doing it on a rotating basis and a jump in at any time thing. Um, and then you're going to drop in a link for the Lion's Den. Yes. Newsletter. Um, the Lion's Den is a Facebook page. Um, you can go there. It's, it's, I just made it public so I could have everybody benefit from that. And every Wednesday, I go live at 11 a.m. East Coast time. Um, and I do uh, 20, 30, similar to what you do, but I do mine weekly. Um, and I just um, talk about subjects that are resonating with me for the week. I uh, base them on what's happened in my life, and I take the lesson out of it, and I share that lesson with others um, and, you know, try and just share the, share the knowledge. <laughs> I, I got to imagine that where you're at now, you feel like content is just flooding over you. It is. It, and it, it couldn't be if my perspective was different. You got to have the right perspective. You got to be watching for the, the lessons. You got to be looking for them, right? You got to view these things that are happening to you as lessons. And you got to ask yourself, what is this telling me? What is this teaching me? What am I taking away from this? A lot of people don't do that. And it's, I, I can so relate, because like I said, the dryer thing, unless you've lived outside the US or as an expat in certain countries, and you see the sun, you know, it's like, yay, laundry day, the sun is out. It sounds really <laughs> ridiculous. Bad. But it's the truth of the way you live. But what I thought was funny is, so we left, went there, were gone for three plus years, came back, and there were tech clothes in my closet that still had the laundry tag on it from when we left the U.S. the first time. And in that process, I realized how much I, I took with me, I hung on to, I thought, thought I was going to need, that in reality, when my life had to get simple and functional, there was so less that I needed. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. At the end of the day, it's all just stuff. One of the things I learned when my mother passed away, my, my father passed away first, and then my mother passed away eight years later. And one of the, we're going through the stuff in the house, and I realized, like, a lot of this stuff had sentimental value to them, but it meant very little to us at all. And 
I'm looking at it like not through the same sentimental value that she would have looked at it. And I'm, I'm wondering what the hell she bought this thing for? What was she doing with it? <laughs> and it changed my mindset because now when I make purchases, all I can think of is my poor children, Steven and Katie, going through my stuff going, why the hell did dad buy this? <laughs> and so- Well, could you know, sew a tag on the inside of that shirt where it goes when you pass? Like send this to Eric. Eric G. Reed Coaching Services. There you go. <laughs> special, um, special order. But, but I think you do make a point, and maybe it's the lesson for today on top of all of it, is stop filling your wants and start chasing your desires. Oh, love it. Brilliant. That's it. That's because, it. Because that's, at the end of the day, live a life filled with desire, not full of wants. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I so appreciate your afternoon. Um, I know that it's now getting time for you to go down to the square and have a glass of wine and some cheese and, and, and just talk about nothing because the sun is out and the weather is beautiful and the wine bottle truck has come through and collected its day's harvest. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Eric, thank you so much for letting me participate in fun friend Friday and my festive frock in front of my phenomenal fiesco, fresco. <laughs> it's been a blast. I, I love the opportunity. So thank you so much. I love getting to know you better. I've been tuning in for the last month or so, and I'm just really enjoying connecting with you. Thank you. I, I, I'm going to just receive that. Um, one of the lessons I teach people is just receive it. Yep. Don't quantify it. Yeah, just take somebody it. dropped a meal on your table. Sit down and eat it. <laughs> um, I, I do, I do, I do um, thank you, and I thank you for taking time out of your day to be a fun friend Friday, and really taking your life to the next level and showing people that you know what? Yeah, it happens. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen easily, but it happens. And, and so, everybody, take a moment. Um, go over to the Lions Den. Sign up so that you can keep in touch with Greg during and his Wednesday event. And then um, check in with Diane, check in with Greg, check in with Melanie or Mizell about um, the, the courses that they're offering and where they're going with that. Like I said, they are phenomenal people. I, I can only offer um, recommendations for what they bring to the table is always the highest and best value that they can give you at that time. So you will be well served by them. And uh, we got to hit the play it again music. Now people were loving your dance. I love it. This music is great. So you didn't embarrass your daughter at the wedding? I didn't. Um, that's a whole nother story. We shouldn't even go down that. I may need to get you to coach me through that um, emotional discourse. <laughs> I am so embarrassing my kids at their wedding. I am like going all out, total shame on the dancing. I'm gonna be doing the dad dance and like doing all of the things that's gonna make them just so grateful they found somebody and left our house. Yes, exactly, you, as, as well you should. You've earned the right. <laughs> uh, anyways, amen, amen. I have got, their, their adulthood is gonna just be terror and I'm gonna love every moment of it. That's why I'm staying fit. That's one of my burning desires is to terrorize my kids when they're young adults. <laughs> and so I get up every morning and do something to try and keep me in shape long enough to do that. Easily done. <laughs> Easily done. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for Fun Friend Friday. Take a minute, join Greg, take a minute, share this out, invite a few friends. And as the day goes by and you listen to this, whether live or in replay, just just capture a note, capture an idea, capture a thought, and shoot it over to Greg and say, I really appreciated you this morning for doing this. This is what I learned. Because in his industry and his mind, as coaches and speakers and inspirers, we always like to know when we're hitting the note because we want to hit it more often for more people to impact more lives. Awesome. Thank you, my Love friend. It. Have a great day. Be blessed. And everybody, I'll see you on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eric.